All right, super excited to have this conversation today. I'll tell you what, this young man, if you have not heard of Chris, you need to. He topped out at 481 pounds. 481 pounds. And uh, my man lost 260 pounds. If you don't believe me, look, here's the deal. This is the before and after. Unbelievable. I can't wait to have this conversation. So Chris, I'm bringing him on camera right now. All I'm saying is look at this. If you are not excited about this conversation, I don't know what else to tell you. Because, wow. So let's see, it says connecting. Chris, can you hear me? Hey, hey Dude, what's up, man? Is this real? Yeah. That is unbelievable. Yeah. Now, uh, now just so you know, you're 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 the lighting of wherever you are right now. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to figure that out yeah, in my be truck. Cool. Hold yeah, on. So that way we can see it's legit okay. like what the heck? Look at this. Let's see. Patrick Maybe says inspiring. I, I believe know. it. Look, I don't even have to say anything. We don't even have to talk. All I have to do is hold up this picture the entire time. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Almost 500 pounds, 481 pounds. Yeah, I got a little out of control Dude, for a while there. So inspiring. So I can't wait to hear this story, man. I'm really pumped up about it. I can't get enough of this photo. I cannot get enough of this before and after shot right here. Uh, so as we're tuning in right now, we're going to have a conversation with Chris about his journey through losing a Micah Bromwitz. You know, essentially, <laughs> I don't make, I don't weigh quite 260 pounds, but that was my that was my max. I maxed out at right there about 250. So, uh, you lost a fat yeah. mic. That's pretty much what you lost, brother. <laughs> wow. Is that uh that better is on perfect the light? Now. Yeah, you look good now. You look good. All so, right. um, I just want to say, Chris, I am uh, I'm really appreciative of you submitting this story. And this conversation is a little long overdue because. Uh, realistically, we've never really had, even had a conversation. Um, I don't, I don't think so. No. So this is going to be great for me and anyone else who's watching and you've been tuning in on some of these combos. And I just got inspired to make sure that in 2019, I make it a mission to put each of you authors into the spotlight because we've raised some awesome awareness for PB and J. A lot of people have read these stories. Um, you know, I get some really great inspiring emails from people and it's like, well, why not do what everyone else is doing and go on Facebook Live and let people hear your story uh, firsthand? So thanks for accepting my invitation. And um, before we get into the meat of this, which is how does someone lose 260 pounds? What are the decisions? What's the story? What's the 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 um, just the energy behind that? The the just kind of I'm excited to get into the lens of how you viewed the world beforehand, how you view the world now. Uh, I'm sure people are excited about that, but I'm more, I'm more interested to kind of start this journey with, uh, you know, who was Chris as a kid? You know, were, were you always like, you know, the fat kid, chubby kid growing up or at some point early on in life were you, um, was there something that happened that allowed you to like give yourself permission to indulge in food and that just kind of, you know, changed the course? I mean, what, what would you say? I know it's kind of written in the story a little bit, but I'd love for you to talk about that. Yeah, I guess uh, growing up, I was pretty much always the big kid growing up. Um, I think there's some pictures from way back when, when I was like six, seven, where I might have been somewhat skinny. But uh, after that, it just kind of, I've pretty much always been the big kid. Um, and it's just kind of, it was, uh, I think I mentioned a little bit, and I actually was rereading it today. I, I, now that I've reread it, I probably could have gone in more depth at some point. That's what this but, conversation's uh, for, man. You know, what was you just, wanted to put in the book? Yeah, um, be, you know, being big it was just that's who I was so there was never any I never knew like I never knew a healthier version of myself mm -hmm. that's who I was um and that's kind of so there was no mentality I was just that's who I was and that's who I continued to be for most of and, and you mentioned a, a yo-yo diet where, where do you think that um that terminology kind of came from for you like did you when did you become aware I guess at what point in life were you like okay uh, this is just who I am. I'm just going to be a big kid and, um, you know, I'm just going to accept it. 
did that happen early teens, probably middle school, high school, or? Um, yeah, I don't know if I never really like accepted it, but I, I mean, I guess I did accept it. Just the yo-yo diet, like I would I, when I started getting high school is when I would try and lose weight sometimes because uh, I had some coaches that would uh, encourage me to do it, and I, I'd lose thirty, forty pounds. But then once the sport was done, I'd go right back and become my normal self and gain it right back plus some. Um, and that's kind of where I talked about my weight kind of ballooned after high school because I'd quit all sports after that. And I, I was about 360 my senior year of high school. And within, uh, by the time I was 20, I was already pushing over 450. Mm -hmm. So, and how old are you now? 23. So, by 20 March. years old, you were pushing 400 pounds, you said? So, yeah. And now, within, uh, within a couple of years, I mean, you, you lost. 250 plus pounds in just about two years yeah I, uh yeah it came off pretty quick in the beginning i wasn't really uh i would, I, I didn't do it completely right um well it, it worked but i cut some corners and uh, because of that i ended up paying the price for it but uh, we fixed that too i think i talked about in a little book uh in the book for a little bit um i couldn't uh, there was about a uh for five month period that I actually couldn't walk on my own. Um, and, uh, that was, it was, I was in Brooks rehab for a couple months. And, uh, so that was, and obviously I'm speaking light of it right now because it's such a great, such an awesome example of what the human spirit can offer someone. And, um, I know I'm going to kind of shift gears because I know it's, it's not going to be light this entire time that during this whole conversation, but I wanted to start that way because <clears throat> it's just remarkable. It is absolutely remarkable and inspiring and unbelievable to be able to do that. And everyone needs to meet you. Everyone needs to hear this story. And I'm, I'm pumped to be able to start and, and just let, let's just dig in, man. I want to hear it, man. Talk to us about this journey. You, you, so, so as a kid, your, your identity, I'm always, you know, I'm just a big kid. That's who I am. I'm going to play sports. I'm going to lose 30, 40 pounds here. I'll gain it back. And then some I'm done with sports. I'm 20 years old. And I'm like, screw it, you know, let's just find comfort in, uh, in food. <laughs> and um, I'm going to find this comfort in food. We max out at 481 pounds. You reach this threshold of what? What was the threshold that you said, no more, I'm done, forget it. Because it kind of, I guess it probably took you a decade to get to that decision. Yeah. Um, so I, I've been thinking about that. I knew that question was going to come up because I, I wrote it in your book, but I uh, never really talked to a whole lot of people about and it. And I know it's the unspoken, um, so I, I went in... it's vulnerable to talk about it, but I would. No, it's good. I've been, I'm Excellent. ready for it. It was, um, um, yeah, so I was 20, 22 and I, I went in for my uh, yearly physical in July and obviously always being a big guy, the doctor would tell me, you know, you need to do lose weight. You need to get, you know, get healthy. Um, but, uh, I finally, he, we went into the physical and he's like, I'm not going to tell you to lose weight. I'm not going to tell you to get healthy. He just asked me if I wanted to live. Um, and cause he said, if you don't change anything, he said, you might not see 30. And that kind of got me that I went home and just kind of really thought about it for a while. And that's kind of what got me mm -hmm. going. I, I have you know, someone was basically someone was, someone was straight with me, like, you know, a lot of people, they told me I needed to lose weight. Then he told me I need to get healthier, but the, he was pretty much blunt about it. I, I have chills. Um, just thinking about that conversation. Were you by yourself when you were in the room with that doctor? Uh, yeah. And so you went home. You're 20. You said 22 at this time. Yeah. Uh, 22. 22. And now you're 24, you said? No, I was 20, 21. So you were 21, 21, 21 and now you're 21. 23? Yeah. Yep, so this is two people. years ago. Two years ago, you have this conversation with this doctor saying, do you want to see 30? And um, if you want to live, you take that information home. Then what? Uh, actually, I didn't. I, I thought about it for about a, you know, I thought about it for about a month, actually. It, did, it wasn't something that just happened instantly. Um, because I knew there again, they were back to, I didn't want to find another yo-yo diet. I didn't want to find, I needed to commit to something. And that's, uh, 
one of the things too, because I've had some people ask me, you know, how did you do it? You know, what, what, you know, they, they want advice on losing weight and you got to find the right, it's not really a diet. You got to find the right lifestyle change that works for you uh, because not everything works for everybody. And I think that's what a lot of people um, don't understand. You know, they see there's Weight Watchers, there's, you know, there's the South Beach, there's all those diets and they all work, but you got to find one that you commit to. And which one, which one did you commit to, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I ulti- it was kind of a mix of things. I ultimately, yeah, I ultimately went with a, uh, uh, for about a year, it was a very um, low carb, high protein diet mm-hmm. for about a year, um, which I've also, and I've done those in the past too, but the part, you've got to be careful when you start adding back in the carbs. Um, but it was finally, I, I had just reached a point where I was ready to commit and that was kind of the biggest. So if, if someone's listening to this right now and they maybe, maybe they're not like, 260 pounds beyond where they want to be but maybe they're like 50 60 pounds and you know they've tried these yo-yo diets they've they've gone up they've gone down you know they they put on weight they lose weight they, you know and they say i've tried that just like you probably had that conversation with yourself it's like yeah i've tried this before here we go again you know here we go again because if you are on that yo-yo it's like here that that conversation happens when you indulge. It's like, here we go again. Here we go again. What would you say to someone that says, this doesn't have to be the here we go again. You can decide right now to say, this is the way it is. This is the new lifestyle. What would you say to that person that you kind of said to yourself at that point? <clears throat> and um, I guess for me and for really anybody um, you know, all the times in the past when I had tried the different diets, I was doing it for a sport or I was doing it for a coach or a friend or a family member. I was trying for them. And this time it was for me. It was just, it was only, I decide it was, you've got a, the, the biggest dry, I'm, I'm the committed one now. It wasn't other people pushing me. If that makes sense, you've got to, you've got to choose to commit for you. Mm and not not for anybody else so i became the reason that i was doing it and that for me that's what helps drive me to just keep going because i'm doing it for now how did you stay committed were there people that you surrounded yourself with or was there a certain environment change that you went through or uh actually this um new career that i started funny enough um being on the truck i buy i go to walmart a couple of times a week and uh I only buy what I'm supposed to have, so that helps. I don't have any of the, um, like, I don't have the, you know, constant temptation from the fast food stuff and all that. Um, and then I do have some family members that are super supportive about it. Um, and they kind of, you know, they ask me how I'm doing and all that stuff. So it's definitely good to have a support corner of people. Um, and I think that's a big, big. So you're awesome. telling me that this kid right here, at 21 years old at 481 pounds went to this kid right here in two years less than two years because you you decided to cut off some carbs high protein change your career job of what you were doing make different decisions as far as what you were going to put into your body I mean, this sounds like some simple stuff, man. I think I think people watching this are going to be disappointed. <laughs> I mean, it and that's a, it is a simple, it, but it I get and it does sound simple, and it's but ultimately, and that's I think the problem of most people they overthink too much. And for me, it just be I quit overthinking. I quit thinking about the reasons not to, and I just started doing the things I needed to do. And I get, it, it is simple. And that's why a lot of, you know, a lot of people, they tell me, you know, you're an inspiration and everything. And then I'm like, I try and think of this great story, but it's just, it's simple. And I think that's kind of the good, cool thing about it is it is simple. So, and, and, and I think the beautiful part about your story is you reached that threshold. And for those that are just joining us, I mean, you're talking to, to reach the threshold of, I have a conversation with a doctor. I'm 20, I'm 21 years old. And the doctor says, if you want to see 30, you're going to need to, uh, you know, make some changes. And if you want to stay alive, you got to need some changes. You're almost, you're pushing 500 pounds, 480 pounds at that point. You say, all right, you sit on it for about a month and you say enough is enough. I'm going to make a lifestyle change. 
And in that lifestyle change, if you could walk us through the first 30 days and maybe the first 90 days, the first 30 days is usually, you know, the part of excitement. And then that next 60 days is the part of like, where you really need to be committed in order to keep it. Um, so you don't have that yo-yo. So if you could talk about the first 30 and then that next 60 to get us to that first 90 days, well, how would you describe that experience? Yeah, you're definitely right. The, my stepdad told me, you know, the first 30 days are where you kind of create that habit. Um, you know, if you can commit to something for 30 days, then it should be no issue to just keep going. Um, but it was definitely, you know, so the first 30 days, you got to find, you got to find the foods that work for you. You know, you're, obviously, even though it is a low, low carb, high protein, there's still some proteins that you're not, you know, you got to find the right foods that taste good too. Um, cause I think that's a big thing. A lot of people do with the yo-yo diets, they, they get stuck on certain foods and then, or they think they're forced to eat certain foods, but you just got to find foods that you like while you're doing it. Um, and, uh. So yeah, the first 30 days they were exciting because I th I lost uh, I lost about 40 pounds in that first month, um, so it was just super exciting. And uh, I think I think I get the question you're asking, but for me, um, we might need to go out a little further than the 90 days because I talked about in that first three months I lost a hundred over 100 pounds in that first three months. Um, so it was all this, exciting. You know, yeah, I this is good. On the scale every week, five pounds, ten pounds. Um, and then I hit that point where stuff started to catch up to me, obviously, because 100 pounds in three months is not safe So let, at before all. we transition um, away from that, if, if just to make this point clear for everyone, Chris was seeing progress. And when he was seeing progress, it created more excitement to have him to continue to go because I got excitement. I, I got excitement, but then I see progress. Progress makes me feel like I'm actually moving in a good direction. So let me continue these habits. Let me continue thinking the way I'm thinking. Let me continue going. And that that cycle of an upward cycle is really powerful no matter what we're doing. But eventually, it's not sustainable in the sense because there will be a roadblock. There will be a detour. There will be something that comes up. Life circumstance, a death of a loved one, a, a loss of a job, a crazy disaster, divorce, disease. Something happens during that cycle where we're not making that progress anymore. Therefore, we don't get that excitement anymore and we could easily get interrupted and derailed and go into that downward cycle. So you're saying that downward cycle, you lost a hundred pounds and then you reached this threshold again. What was that? Um, what was that situation? Yeah. So after I'd lost that amount of weight, um, I remember it was, it was like November of that year. I uh, I was helping out an uncle and I actually, I fell once and didn't think anything about it. And uh, for like the next three weeks, I continued to fall every so often. Um, and uh, it turns out because of the rapid weight loss, I uh, was deficient in a vitamin B1, uh, controls muscle function. So uh, I ended up in the hospital between two different hospitals for about a month um, and then outpatient for about four more months after that and we were able to get everything back on track but it kind of got me to refocus um not really necessarily on losing the weight quick but losing the weight the right way um and it was just kind of it was definitely that that kind of shifted me too because i was no longer just focusing on the weight i was focusing on more health health wise overall and not mm. just the numbers um and for those first three four months i was only focused mm. on the numbers and what a great reminder for people because like what's the time frame right like i understand if you were training to run a marathon and you set a date like i'm gonna i'm gonna run this race at this time so therefore i have to get like equipped for this deadline and you know we always we, we typically self-impose these deadlines but if i'm hearing you right you didn't have a deadline there wasn't like a, a time like a wedding you had to like get fit for or like a you know a big event or sporting a outcome or like any type of outcome that you were, you just had this self-imposed deadline of like, let me get this done as fast as possible. But in the process of that fast as possible, other aspects of your life got compromised. Does that sound about right? So yeah. what advice would you give to someone that, that maybe is in a similar situation where they're creating the self-imposed deadline for themselves, adding all this pressure to get it done fast, but they might be compromising something else. Yeah, I guess um, you definitely, 
it kind of goes back to that whole doing it. Are you doing it? Like you said, you know, there was no, there was nothing I was trying to lose the weight for. It was, it just became, you're doing it for yourself and you ultimately want to do it the right way uh, be, because it's going to pay off in the long run. Um, if that makes it, because if you do it, it like, like all the yo-yo diets, I was, I was doing it. Um, I guess I'm just, and, and and I just want to acknowledge I was doing, I was doing trying to oh. search for like what you want to say, which is great because you want to add value. And I love that. I just want to acknowledge you for that. And, um, you know, really being able to add value to the question, because the question is, it's not an easy one. It's like, how do you, um, you know, how do you add, how are you going to be able to create a self-imposed deadline, but not let the ego essentially take over where it's like great we're doing it we're doing it we're doing it we just keep doing it fast where we compromise the real internal game which is what you said a vitamin a vitamin b1 deficiency where for some people it might be a relationship maybe they have someone that they really really love but they're so focused on the the, the prize or they're focused on the progress the progress the progress the progress the progress that they alienate themselves or they stop associating with a loved one or people that care about them or they they neglect their business or they neglect their their money situation or they neglect other things for in your case it was neglecting the b1 but oftentimes we're chasing progress 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 that we are so indulged which is the ego being indulged by this yeah i got you um so i guess for that um so about a year ago i was uh I was researching some different things about uh, goals and life purposes and everything. And I think this kind of fits into what you're asking for. It was, you know, everybody's got to, they think they got to find that one life purpose. And for me, for those first three or four months, like my purpose was losing weight. And eventually I read this, I read this line. I don't remember the book it was out of, but it said the only life purpose people should have is to be fully involved in living. Um, so you have passions and you have goals, but don't make any of those passions or goals your purpose. Just make your purpose mm. to live life. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Um, and then, and then you can chase the passions. So you can you can you can chase the weight loss. You can chase the work goals. You can chase you know the relationships, but don't make any of those things your per whole purpose mm. for living. So it sounds like you are feeding your mind, not just feeding your body during this process. I have done a lot of, yeah, picked up on it. And I was kind of, cause I did, I did work um, with Cutco for a little while and they do a lot of those inspirational books. And then I did, and I've kept some of them habits up. I, I try and pick some out and I read some of them and they, they help, they help a lot being on the road and everything. It, uh, you do, and I think that's, and I've talked about that too. And because, and I guess what I meant by my, there was a lot I could have added to my story is the healthier life wasn't for me. It's, it's no longer just about the weight loss. I've changed so much and it's it's become the weight loss it's become you know how i live the way i live it's mm -hmm. like it's everything what were some of the things that you were feeding your mind during the two-year journey of of um after you hit the threshold i lost you lost 100 pounds you find this b1 deficiency you're in the hospital for about a month you know a couple of weeks it was, you said a month in the hospital about yeah, a month in the yeah hospital. about a month yeah. and then you have to recover in this month period, how are you feeding your mind and how did you recover? Because something I'm be, I've been talking about a lot, I heard it on Tiger Woods versus, uh, you know, Phil Mickelson on that battle. And they said, the best golfers don't hit the ball right and straight every time. The best golfers can recover the fastest from the bad shots. And I love that the art of recovery is essentially what happened. You hit this threshold, boom, you're in a hospital one month beyond that month. What was going on with the mind? How do you feed the mind to stay committed? Or how were you at least? So, yeah, so after I got out of the hospital, um, I actually went to stay with my grandparents for a while because they had a house that I could use a wheelchair in. And um, I got actually, I got a lot of people, I got pretty low for those, uh, for a couple months thereafter because I couldn't drive, I couldn't go anywhere, I was out of work. Um, I, uh, I got really low. Um, I didn't talk to many people and uh, eventually I think there became more of a progress thing too um, because I was still losing weight at the time um, but uh, there was a lot of things I couldn't do because I was still about three I was about 330 340 going into that 
and um but they had a they did have a machine um that could like hang from the ceiling but you had to be like you had to be 300 pounds to get into it so it became so we still tried uh, still still trying to lose the weight and but i also had that limitation where i couldn't do a lot of, i couldn't walk i couldn't you know i couldn't do a lot of the exercises a lot of people do so i had to find new ways to do things there um but you know and you kind of mentioned it people people like progress um and for a while there i didn't have any i was just kind of i was stuck in a chair um, but I kind of had to flip that switch and I started setting long-term goals. Um, that's kind of, I've, I've created this list of things that I want to do and that's kind of what keeps me going too. Um, I don't know, a couple of people call it a bucket list, you can call it whatever you want, but for me it was just kind of, it became what I've called it, it's called a limit list. And it's got, uh, it had skydiving on there, it had a couple of different things on there. It started with like 10 items, it's up over 300 now. Um, and it's just things I try and cross off every now and then just to keep me, it's kind of, it's now become a reward system for me. Like if I do, if I meet a certain goal, I'll go do one of them. Um, like this year I'm going to Iceland and Germany and a couple other things. Um, and it's just kind of re little rewards, you know, you, 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 and that's really where I don't focus on the, I, you know, I, I set smaller goals and then when I meet them, I go mm. do something fun. Um, but back to the, back to those three months after, cause I know that's what you were asking about. It was, um. It was kind of, I had to find a way to keep myself because I shut a lot of people out for those three months. Um, and eventually it just became, you know, I was still losing weight. I had to focus on, quit worrying about the negatives and just kind of focus on what was going right. And, you know, I was still losing weight and we, there was small progress in getting the movement back and everything. Um, and I just had to keep focus that my life, I don't know if, I didn't know at the time, I didn't know if it would ever return to normal, but it just keep focusing that it would get better. Where was, um, and I love that you're sharing this, man. I love that. I love the 300 list, bucket list, live it list. I love the live it list. That's great. Uh, so, so, so rich. That's, that's great content. Um, at what point were you, I mean, are you in a position where you're now able to like function, walk and, and be active or? Oh yeah. Yeah. I I, um, I can walk, run, I can do, I can do so just kind of at that point, was, if you could kind of take us through, uh, you're three thirty, your grandma's, you're kind of reaching a level of, uh, we, we could use the word depression. We could use the word low self-loathing or lonely yeah. or whatever word we want to use, but it was, it was a low energy. So we were in a low energy, 330 pounds, which is a massive progress. I mean, from 481 to 330, I mean, that in itself is just remarkable. But yet yeah. you still didn't have the self-love for yourself because there was still low energy there. there was still low energy. Um, it was, what am I missing out on? I can't mm -hmm. run. I can't stand. I can't walk. I, I don't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Yeah, that's going to create low energy. How did you get, tr how did you transition from, I can't do all these things to what's, what's after that? yeah it was um so i've my uh my uh, is back my stepdad again um he, you know he tells me he's like he uh he's like you understand a lot of things but it, it takes a while to seep in um you know it's i'm a pretty hard-headed individual so i guess for me it was a lot of um you know i was i was stuck on what was going wrong but because i and it was there was so much going wrong i forgot about what was going right and the odds, you know, I still had lost all that weight. I still, and for me, you just, I, I basically, you know, it was like, I got to the point where did I want to sit in the house all day or did I want to still do things that I want to still try and continue down the road that the good road that I finally got on, or did I want to get off track again for me? And a lot of things for me, a lot of things just kind of, you reach, you re, for you know, like I said, I, I'm only 23, so I, you know, a relatively short life. But for me, it just reaches a point where you control the way you look at everything. You know, it's like I could be negative about it, and and there's a lot of situations in a lot of people's lives where they could be negative about what's going on, and no one would blame them. But do you want? I guess it just reached, I was, I, my, most of my life was negative and I was just tired of all the negativity. If yeah, it makes, makes a lot sense. of sense. Um, um, and that's why it was kind of, it just eventually I just, yeah, I was stuck in a wheelchair, but 
there was a lot things could have been worse yeah. it's cliche so what was could the have day you got out of that wheelchair um, what was that like um yeah so we had been working at therapy for a little while and we're using a walker um to kind of move around um and I had fallen a couple times while using that. And for the falls were really bad too, because it was like my knees would buckle forward and I would just fall straight to the ground. And they were surprised that I'd ever got hurt doing that because there was the amount of weight I still had was just falling right, right onto the back of my legs. And uh, um, so, yeah, the first day I really, and because the therapist knew nothing about it, I was at the house one day and I just kind of decided I got up out of bed and just, I left the walker behind and just started kind of walking. And, um, got in my truck and I, I had been cleared to drive but I never really felt confident enough to do it and that like through the progress I had been cleared to do things and I still it was more of a mindset for me because I, I had been cleared to drive I had been cleared to kind of do more things on my own but I I wasn't ready to do them because I was still worried in the back of my head it's like what if I fall in the middle of a parking lot and can't get up can't you know then I'm just sitting mm. in the middle of a parking lot um and eventually I just decided, you know, if I wanted to move forward, I needed to do these things. And so I got, I got in the truck and I drove there and left the walker behind. Um, and I think because the walker was more, it was a comfort zone for mm. me for a while. Like I wasn't really putting weight on it, but I carried it around with me. And um, so, and I'll never forget the last day of the very last day of therapy, I actually fell. Uh, we were doing some, uh, we were pushing it a little further and I, f I fell to the ground and the therapist kind of laughed and I was like, you know, it, it happened, but it was a good thing because it was, we were pushing me, but it, um, you know, you kind of learn because the walking, the running and the walking didn't come back instantly. You know, I had to get, um, you know, I had to get more confident on my legs and everything like that. It started off at slow paces. Um, but then you just kind of grow in confidence because a lot of people, they don't think about walking. I, you know, none of us, even now, now me, I don't, I don't wake up in the morning, get out of bed and think left foot, right foot. And for three or four months, my mind was left foot, right foot. And, um, it just kind of, it took a while to get out of that mentality, mm. I guess. Wow. I, I just, I, what, what resonated with me was how liberating it must have felt to take those steps without the walker. Yeah, right, maybe well, it didn't, uh, but for me, I just, just... hearing the story, I was like, I, I almost, like, I almost envision like a Rocky Balboa, like, you know, like, well, you know, like <laughs> the music start playing of like, you know, you know, like uh, some Eye of the Tiger. I mean, yeah. wow, like you're, 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 you're go from this, I'm stuck in a wheelchair, I can't walk, I can't run, I can't do this, I can't do that. And it's like just liberating to say, screw it, I'm going to leave this walker aside, I'm going to just go for it. And if I fall, screw it, I'm going to fall, but I'm going to at least live my best life and move forward. And, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe you could speak to that. Maybe it wasn't that emotional for you. Maybe it was just like, yeah, whatever. I'm just leaving the walker. But um, anything show up there as far as that? Yeah, you know, it was very um, that that first day was very, you know, it actually and I didn't just like get up. I thought about it. like I sat. it probably took me a good 15 minutes. I I woke up that morning and I just kind of sat there on the edge of the bed, like staring at the walker um, because no one was home that day. So I was just like, you know, it is like, you know what I could I eventually I had to quit thinking about it because I was like, well, you know, I could go for it, but then, you know, what if I do and I get halfway out the house and I fall, it's like, and, and I think that's the, we're all good. Like get, I basically had to, for lack of, I had to forget about falling because, and I think that's more than just that instant. Like a lot of the things I do now, I just got to forget about the idea that I could fall and just keep going anyways. Um, because I think in the back of our head, a lot of us are, afraid of falling mm -hmm. at whatever we're doing. Um, and eventually I just had to forget about falling and it was just kind of go. And I think cause for, and that kind of, cause once I, once I took that step prog like I was able, I was only in for therapy for about another two weeks after I start quit using the walker. Um, because I was pushing myself harder because I wasn't worried about falling. Like I knew I might fall, but it wasn't a worry in the back mm -hmm. of my head anymore. Um, and I think, you know, that kind of really helped me move along. Just forget, you know, n knowing you will fall, you might fall, but don't worry about so, it. So, so you, um, I love that by the way, that's so rich, uh, you know, forget about falling. I love that, you know, it's, it's very applicable to other parts of life. 
And I also want to acknowledge you about what you were doing when no one was there. You said no one's home. It's not like you're trying to impress people. It's not like you're on Facebook Live doing a vlog, being like, hey, guys, watch me. I'm about to start walking today. It's like it's what you were doing when no one was watching except for you, yourself, your thoughts, your beliefs, your goals, your fears, and setting and, and setting a lot of that aside and say, you know what, I'm going to go do this. And you just go for it and forget about falling and just moving forward. And I love that. And I think everyone needs to sometimes do that. Sometimes we need to, you know, ask that person out on a date or try for that business that you want to start up or, you know, forget about falling, forget about, you know, forget about it and just go for it and take the risk and share the goals and do the unthinkable because even if you do fall down, which you did many times, you got right back up yeah. and then lost another hundred pounds, 80 pounds. Yeah. So let's fast forward a little bit. Talk to us about that, that last 80 pounds to get to where you are right now. Yeah. So the uh, last 80 pounds was definitely, it was kind of a shift. I quit worrying about um, the quickness um, because, you know, like up to that point, I think it had only been, six months and i lost a bulk of the weight so in that six so months, in six um, months you went from pounds. 481 pounds to 360 330 no four yeah right yeah when i left yeah when i left therapy i was just under 300 wow. at that point um so that was yeah eight months at the end of therapy was right around may so that was i started in october of 2016 and then and uh, by May of 2017, I had lost. I went from 480 to right under 300. Wow. And and just for those that are just tuning in, this is what we're talking about. 481 pounds to present day. You're looking at what? What are you at now, anyway? Lost 260 pounds. No. Uh, yeah, I'm right. I'm down right around two. What is it about two thirty? I've, I've been kind of hovering the last couple of months, but right around two thirty. You shit, right man. Now. Like, that is so awesome. That is so awesome. I freaking love that, man. Oh, that is so cool. So, so, um, all right. So sorry, sorry to interject there, but so talk to me. You lost two hundred and sixty pounds, um, but at this point, you're down about a hundred or so. Maybe maybe a hundred a little bit more. Yeah, well, actually, yeah, so, you're you're down about 180 pounds. You're about 180 yeah, you're down, pounds down. Yeah, at the end of so third. after eight months or so, yep. you still got to like another 80 pounds to go to get to where you are. You finally can walk. You 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 get out of the wheelchair. You get you get out of the physical therapy, and you're still 300 pounds though. Where how does this other 70 pounds, yeah. 80 pounds? Where where does that story? How does that finish up for us? So the uh, the weird thing about therapy was um, before that, like uh, a lot of a bulk of the weight loss was strictly diet, um, and uh, at therapy kind of because they were we were pushing pretty hard. Um, while I was an inpatient, we were working out uh, from like eight in the morning to about four in the afternoon for three weeks straight, mm -hmm. five days a week, and then. Um, in an out in outpatient therapy again i was still working out three to four days a week for three or four hours a day and that actually created another habit for me where when i didn't i actually wanted to like i wanted to work out every day and because of that it helped with the weight loss because it uh you know i, I maintained the i was able to start eating a little more but i was able to maintain a higher level activity because i because of falling and having to go through therapy it forced me to create a habit of working out more often um and so yeah so that last 80 to 100 pounds i was actually i had just started uh this the career that i have now um, i decided to get into truck driving so a lot of people are like you know you lost 80 pounds while truck driving it is it's like yeah it was but i found the time to still get in the workouts i found the time to i made sure i, I don't you know a lot of the the guys out here they'll stop at the mcdonald's or arby's or whatever's in the truck stop and i make sure to find a walmart every couple of weeks and fill up my fridge and i still maintain the right type of diet mm. and everything. have you seen that documentary um, about um where he brings a juicer and in the back of his car and he just he just juices um what is it fat dead and nearly fat sick and nearly dead or something like that it's on netflix have you seen that documentary 
Yeah, fat, no, I think I it's haven't. called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, I think is what it was called. And it was a, a guy who, I believe it was a truck driver, maybe I could be mistaken, but he used to bring a uh, a juicer with him on the road and he would just juice, that's all he would do. And like that was his catalyst for growth and he lost you know, a bunch of weight. But I, I was just curious. It, it might be worth checking out for anyone who's watching. It's a pretty good one. Yeah. So I love all the support. You know, there's another one. Way to go, little Chris. You know, you have you have a lot of people that love you, man. It must feel really good to know how many people you're touching, uh, just through your story. That's funny. I can't. I can't see it. Hey, right it's, now all, with the phone it's all good. Sideways, I see it so. for you. We got uh, you know Rodney joined in and gave some love. Ashley gave a lot of love. You got AJ uh, Prosher gave some love. Cody Beard gave some love. Mm -hmm. So uh, Patrick Herrick gave some love. He's who introduced us. So. Uh, you got a lot of people who love yeah. you, man, and uh, for you to stick, st stay on this journey, we're glad that you did, so that way you can live way past 30, and not only uh, just live in years, but also an experience, and live your best life, and, you know, go through your live-it list of 300 items or more, which is pretty exciting right now, so what's next for you, man? You, you have this new life, you know, you're, you're um, back to running and walking, and you got your job, your career, you got your... Um, you got all these people that love you, that are inspired by your story about who you are, what you stand for, how you believe, you know, just all of it. What's next, man? You're, you're only 20, 22? Oh, no, uh, 23. So 23, 23 years old. So you're only 23 yeah. years old. You have a lot of life ahead of you. What's next? Yeah, so, um, you know, I've kind of, I've gotten this career where I want it for now. Um, I've got some ideas to grow it, but, uh, I've started, uh, a couple of, you know, I've started, I like, I enjoy giving back. I've started doing some things with that. Um, I actually just did this, uh, thing in December where I did 26 marathons in 26 days. Wait, you just did that? Um, and, uh, that, wait, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in December. You ran? No, but you, but you, walking. you completed. I don't, I don't run twenty six marathons. Yeah, in, in twenty six days. days. Well, how the hell did I miss that? I, it was uh, I posted about it every oh now and then on Facebook. Um, I was doing a thing. I was actually I was doing a thing for uh, the place that I spent inpatient, um, the Brooks Rehab. Um, I was trying to uh, raise some money for Christmas gifts for the kids. Um, it turned out they only had one kid in there, but uh, which was great. That means a lot of people got to go home. But because uh, I I was inpatient at Brooks over the holidays and that wasn't fun at all, um, so I did a thing to raise some money for toys. Um, the uh, I talked to Brooks. The idea was never to do 26 marathons in 26 days. It was just one of the things on my list was to do a marathon. So I did one on the first day. Um, but the way I was raising money was by walking miles. Um, so. I did one the first day and the second day and 10 days later, I just decided to just go for it. But it was taking me like six to seven hours a day. It was it's a incredible. Though. What a great accomplishment. If you don't mind me asking, how much did you end up raising? Yeah. Uh, we raised a little bit over $3,500. 3500 bucks for the kids. And you did 26 marathons in 26 days. And this yeah. is from the guy two years before who was stuck in a wheelchair who can't do anything. Yeah. Incredible, man. Absolutely incredible. What do you do to feed your mind? Or what have you done to feed your mind? Audiobooks, reading books, um, podcasts, YouTube. If somebody wanted to get inside of Chris's head to see what you're listening to or what you're feeding your mind, well, what does that look like? Um, you're on the road a lot. Yeah, I need to... I am on the road a lot. Uh, I drive about 11 hours a day. Um, I listen to a lot of music. Uh, a lot of I found this uh, app called Pep Talk. It's got a lot of different uh, audio. Uh, I, I think some of them are books, but it's a lot of different motivational stuff. Um, so that's a cool app there. Um, I read a little bit, um, but uh, for the most part, music and Pep Talk is what I, I listen. So I guess yeah, audio stuff mm -hmm. going down the road, um, and. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I don't know. I need to, I need to get back into doing more stuff to kind of refocus my mind. Like, or not refocus it, but just kind of get it back um, going again. Because uh, I took some time off during the holidays and had some fun and just need to kind of get back into the grind. Um, but, uh, 
yeah so that's what the pet talk has really come in handy i've um it that's where you know different it's got all kinds of you know whatever kind of motivation you're looking for mm -hmm. you can find it on there um and then i you know every now and then people suggest different books to me but uh, i've never been a big book book person um so Dude, it's amazing absolutely amazing so if anybody uh, was interested in catching up with you or asking you any more questions or supporting you on your journey or, um, you know, just just being curious or just want to be friends with you. I mean, I think after listening to this conversation, there's probably a lot of people that just want to be friends with you or just want to connect with you or be involved in whatever you're involved in. How would they be able to stay in touch with you? What would be the best way? Yeah, so my uh, Facebook and Instagram and everything, they're all public. Um, anybody can message me on there. Um, that's kind of my, that's actually, being on the road, I've, that's pretty much my main face, you know, social media and my cell phone. That's about what I got to contact people. So um, that's it's great, man. Pretty much, yeah. You know, that's like, absolutely great. Well, I, uh, I can't thank you enough for your time. Uh, it is just remarkable to hear the story behind these two pictures. It's just absolutely incredible to go from 481 pounds to about 230 and um, losing you know, about 260 pounds to now 26 marathons in 26 days to be able to not be able to walk in a wheelchair, you know, um, going through rehab, stuck in a hospital bed for over a month. Uh, what an incredible journey you've been on, brother. And um, I'm, I'm just so honored to have this conversation be recorded, be broadcasted, your story to be in this book. And uh, I don't think this is going to be the last combo. I know this is our first conversation, <laughs> um, yeah. but I don't think yeah, this yeah. will be our last one, man. I, I think that uh, you have a lot of really exciting things that are ahead of you. And, and um, you know, I want to, I want to support. So next time you have a, a marathon, I can't promise I'll, I'll join, but, uh, you know, if you have a cause <laughs> or something, make sure, you know, I don't know how I missed it, but I don't want to miss the next one. So I uh, want to support as much as possible. I'm sure the community wants to support you as well. Such a, such a great, great uh, soul and um, really exciting. And Rodney Grant says, come shovel some snow, bro. So he wants you to go shovel, shovel some snow <laughs> with him and get a workout with him. And uh, Michelle or Michael Dave Gill, is that, I, might, I might be saying that wrong. Oh, no, they, they shot it. Well, too, yeah, yeah they say go, Chris. You know, he is great. And uh, Bob Beard, you know, get ready to go skydiving, he says. So, so. yeah, that's actually, uh, I just set that goal today. Uh, I, when, I've went skydiving once, but um, I'm going to go get certified at the end of the year. So I've got to lose a couple more pounds. To hey. that, if anyone could do it, you're going way. to, brother. So I appreciate your time, man. I appreciate, I appreciate it, man. you. You. Um, just fantastic, fantastic story. And thank you so much, brother. And, uh, just keep doing what you're doing, man. Yeah. Right, Take care, brother. It. Thanks. All right. You too. Wow. I don't know about you, but I feel, um, I feel so rejuvenated after ha hearing that story. So, uh, for those of you guys, uh, that missed it, you could read his story here. Uh, it is chapter seven. And uh, stories of weight loss from Grab Tomorrow's Real Stories, Real People. And uh, Chris, his story was just absolutely remarkable to see him uh, lose 260 pounds and go from that guy to this guy. Just absolutely remarkable. And what's cool is all the all the proceeds from this book uh, goes to PBNJ for Tampa Bay. Now PBNJ for USA. We're at uh, just under 74,000 sandwiches that we've made our mission is to uh, get 100 locations across the United States. So far, we've had California, we've had Texas, we've had Arizona, we've had Nebraska, Florida. We want, we want to expand. So if you're listening to this, check out PB&J for Tampa Bay, uh, Inc. It's on Facebook or PB&J for USA. And uh, we want to continue to make our difference. Uh, right now, we're at 74, just under 74,000 meals total since 2015. Our mission is 100 locations once a month 500 meals each location that's 600,000 people we could get a chance to feed per year so if you're interested check out our page let us know thank you for joining in and uh hearing chris's awesome story so take care we'll uh we'll be um uh, on thursday our next uh next interview and conversation is going to be with uh, sam latrico so I look forward to that story it's going to be fantastic we'll chat soon Bye bye